Hey, music junkies. Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. If the greatest music of the rock and roll era is in your veins, you're going to want to become a part of this community by subscribing to this channel below so you don't miss out on our daily episodes. Also, support our mission of curating the best of the rock era, interviews about the great songs from the artists by becoming a patron. Now, today I'm really excited. We have a special episode. I got to tell you, one of the greatest joys of my life is being able to go in depth with my heroes, your heroes, the great artists of the rock era on their greatest songs. I mean, songs that have been the backbone of my life, of your life, from youth to now. I mean, songs that continue to just knock me out. Broken Wings by Mr. Mister is definitely one of those songs for me. It's always been one of my favorites. It's just a masterpiece of the 80s. I mean, that haunting bass line, the epic guitar parts, Richard Page's fluid and defining vocal. It's just audio perfection. And today we go behind this classic with Richard Page. Song, of course, is from Mr. Mister's Fantastic Platinum 1985 album, Welcome to the Real World, which I have back here. My actual copy from when I was a little kid. It went to number one on the album charts in early 86 and included three top 10 hits, including the number one hits, Broken Wings and Kyrie. Broken Wings was recently used in an episode of Reese Witherspoon's show, Little Fires Everywhere. It was pretty cool. The song just continues to entrance coming generations. Here's Richard Page with the story. Baby, don't understand why we can't just hold on to each other's hands. Let's talk about Broken Wings, which you were just saying that you didn't ever think that that was going to be a hit. How did that song come together? That album was an experiment. You know, we had just come from a very sophisticated kind of jazz fusion oh, yeah. thing. And it wasn't working. We'd had three albums and we had picked up a lot of fans in the music world, you mm -hmm. know, musos uh, all over the world. There's a little pocket still like in Japan or in Sweden. They, they just, they worship that music. But it wasn't working commercially for us. And we really thought we had something to yeah. say. And so we kind of regrouped and we put Mr. Mr. together. We went after the coolest producer of the time, which is Peter McKeon, who had just come yeah. off of the Men at Work album. And we thought, you know, let's get a little his magic on our thing and it'll all work. Well, it was a good sounding record. It just nothing happened with it. So, but uh, a lot of the songs, I, you know, I still, I think that was sort of how we were getting our feet wet and starting to figure out who we were going to be. And strangely, when we got around to doing Welcome to the Real World, which was the, you know, the album that had the two big hits on it, I was sort of back to, let's just write great songs. Let's don't worry about getting the hit producer and trying to formulate the sound and everything. Let's just, let's do what we do. And that's what we did. And honestly, I never thought Broken Wings would ever be a hit. During that time as you were putting together the second album, my understanding is that you were offered a vacancy in two pretty big bands at that time that were looking for a bass player, singer, lead sing well, lead singer, but also in Chicago's position. Yeah. Chicago and Toto. Tell me about that. A lot's been made of that. And, you know, my name came up with a bunch of names as far as, you know, on a short list of people that would be good to replace Peter and um, Bobby Kimball. So I, that's really all it was. You know, I was being considered for those gigs. But you really wanted to focus in on... I just felt like we had something really strong and I, I just didn't feel like it was time to abandon that. But, you know, John Lang and I, um, really close friends, went through a lot of stuff. Steve George, of course. And we got into the thing that everybody was doing at the time, which is doing tons of drugs and, you know, just yeah. partying and going to studio. I mean, you go into a session and guys would have these three gram vials of Coke, like sitting on their synthesizer, you know, and people were chopping it up. It was like, you know, if Freud used it, it's not addictive and... It's so a creative person's thing. Well, that's how we kind of all got into that. But of course, you know, we've seen the damage done. And it really kind of like derailed me for seriously for a few years. Coming out of that and deciding that that wasn't going to be a, a part of our lives anymore was really what Broken Wings was about. And John had been reading Khalil Gibran. And a lot of, uh, he, you know, he's a big reader and, a, and a, he loves poetry and he loves spiritual type pithy kind of teachings. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came to me and I had this 
thing worked out on the bass and the bass lick that you know and the little sus chords and all that. The dum dum. Yeah. Baby, I think tonight we can take what was wrong, make it right. He just came over to my house and he was like, I think this will fit. This will, you know, and so it, it that just sort of happened like that. But when we got into the studio, it really started to take shape. And, and I remember the vocal, when I did the vocal, it was one of those transcendent moments, you know, where everybody was kind of going, wow, this is, this is really something, you know? Take these broken wings, learn to fly again, learn to live so free. But it was so long, it was so long. And they were saying, you know, no, program director is going to play this it's over four minutes and it was five and a half or five something we tried editing we tried yeah. to you know to to condense it essentialize it and it just didn't it never worked so finally i think i just said write four something on the box at that time <laughs> you would send a like a, uh, a half inch reel and they would you know they would do their dub and put it in their cart or whatever you know and play yeah. it on the radio so nobody really checked, I guess, to see how long it was. You kind of pulled the little trick that uh, Phil Spector did oh, back did in the day. Oh, did he do that too? He did that with You've Lost That Love and Feeling. Oh, really? Back it was too said, long? It, it, but at that time, it was like, if this is over three minutes, they won't play. Right, yeah. And it became a number one hit, the same yeah. thing. Yeah, that's right. repeat it again. That's yeah. really cool. You're right about the, the short songs. My son was just, all of a sudden, he's into Ray Charles, and we were listening to it in the car, and he was playing Hit the Road Jack. I mean, it was over before. It began, it was like, well, hey, check it. He was like, yeah, two minutes and three seconds, you know. So it just got got to the point and that was it. Because of uh, what Phil Spector did, the Beatles released Hey Jude, which was another long song right. that went to number one. I know those guys didn't care at all. <laughs> if it was six minutes. So Broken Wings, also the video was really iconic. I remember seeing that video it was kind of I grew up in a small town so it was my window to the world mm -hmm. MTV and that video is so iconic with the way it was put together did you have anything to do with that or Not did they really. kind of No we hired a director a video director Oli Sasson I think his name was and he basically just came in and said here's what I how I see this song and we looked at the storyboards and the thing and we were, yeah that's cool so we just did it and you didn't really expect much. You know, the song yeah. wasn't a hit yet. Well, and you fought to have that be the first song released from the album. Well, I don't know if I fought for it, but you know, we had a meeting. There's so much history in, in this. You know, we were uh, at RCA when Jose Menendez was there, uh -huh. who you, as you know, was famously murdered by his, his two yeah. sons, who I met and knew and, you know, and his wife, Kitty, and we, we were friends. We traveled around Europe together. But Jose was um, was not, he, and he would admit that he was not a music guy. I think he came from Hertz Rent a Car or something. But he was an yeah. exec, and he knew how to run a business. Mm -hmm. And we sat around in this meeting with Paul Atkinson, who's since passed, who was you know a guitar player in the Zombies, our A and R guy. Paul was a great guy. And Paul and George, manager, myself and Jose, and we were like, well, what's the single going to be? And we went this song and that tried to tried to analyze why it would or wouldn't be a hit you know how you do these things and finally jose who really didn't know anything about music he said richard what's the best song in the album i said oh broken wings that's your single <laughs> and that's how it happened it's kind of through the decades been presented through pop culture in different ways grand theft auto it's kind of the opening scene of that video game <laughs> presenting it to a new generation Vice City is 24 karat gold these days. The Colombians, the Mexicans, hell, even those Cuban refugees. Are Clay Aiken covered as well. Right. Take these broken wings. Rick Springfield. Oh, we've known each other forever. 35 years, probably. You know, Rick, I, I met Rick when um, his producer, Keith Olsen, Oh, okay, yeah. Keith Olsen called me up and Tom Kelly, I think it was Tom, to come and sing on Rick's album. And that's, that's when we met. So we've just, you know, we've re remained friends over the years. There's a version of Broken Wings you guys sing yeah. together. Yeah, right. When we hear the voices sing. 
Richard Page's records are it get more and more incredible. I've always loved his voice. I mean, he sang on he sang background on 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 my fir, on Tao, on success and on uh, living in Oz. And he I always say he's had the voice I always wanted. You know, it's got <laughs> like that incredible richness. And uh, and uh, I remember we were doing Tao actually, and he was doing the first Mr. Mister album, and and was you know. We we're talking about that, that he's, he finally got like a record deal. And a, so I've always loved his voice. We're still good friends and he yeah. sings occasionally on, the, on, on my, my stuff. Um, yeah, a great version of Broken Wing, the two of you together. Yeah, right, right, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, he's a great, great singer and, and, and his music just gets better and better. And his voice does too. Love his voice. And then Tupac, until the end of time. Yeah. What did you think when you heard that? Wow, I was... Really impressed. I mean, I was honored, you know. I actually got to be a part of that. You know, yeah. I went down and, and did a guest vocal on it for one of the versions. That was cool. Perhaps I was addicted to the dark side. Somewhere inside my childhood when this my heart die. And even actually, that got me some real street cred with my kids, friends <laughs> at school <laughs> at that time, you know. Oh, I'm sure. It's like, whoa, your dad and Tupac? Yeah. Hey, thanks for watching. Leave us a comment about Richard Page, about Mr. Mister, and this life-altering song below in the comments. Tell us about your memories related to the song. I'd love to hear those. Celebrate this masterpiece the right way by getting Mr. Mister's digitally remastered and expanded edition of Welcome to the Real World. It includes six bonus tracks. You can get that below by clicking on the Amazon link. It's one you're gonna wanna have. To hear it on Spotify, click on our playlist below as usual. If you like our content, join our community. We'd love to have you by subscribing to this channel below. Become a patron to help us keep the music alive. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Stay safe.